mystery is my honey. Today's story took place in New York about a month ago. Raymond Flagg, millionaire and proud descendant of a famous family, had learned that his only son, Andrew, had fallen in love with a girl of doubtful character and had decided to offer some fatherly advice. Well, hello, Dad. Come in. Hello, Andrew. I, I'd like to talk to you, if I may. Well, sure, Dad. Oh, yeah, I thought you were leaving for Chicago tonight. I am, in an hour. Andrew, as you know, I've never interfered with your uh, private life. You must grant me that. Why, sure. You've been swell, Dad. Thank you, son. I have, uh, since your mother's death, attempted to be both mother and father. I mean, uh, it isn't easy for a man as busy as I to, shall we say, supervise his son's activities. (laughs) Hey, this sounds like a lecture. It's a little out of your line, isn't it, Dad? Frankly, my boy, I am a bit embarrassed. The thing that I have to say is... (laughs) It's most difficult. What's it all about? Andrew, ours is a very old and proud name. It dates back to early Puritan days. As the family fortune has been handed down from generation to generation, we have adopted certain standards. Do you understand? Go on. On you rests the burden of carrying on the name of Flag. It is your responsibility alone. Do you uh, follow me? I see think I'm beginning to. Splendid. You can understand, then, the importance of uh, an intelligent marriage. So that's it. You found out about... No, please, my boy. I'm not interested in learning the young lady's name. That is not important. Frankly, I am disappointed that you have not uh, consulted me before now. Consulted you? Well, why should I? Oh, please, let's not be difficult, my boy. Oh, wait a minute, Dad. Yes, son? There's one thing you must know before you go any further. Yes? Dad... I'm in love. In love? Come, my boy. I mean it, Dad. I am. This is the real thing. The real thing. Well, I'm not going to lose patience with you, Andrew. That would be folly. However, I feel it my duty to explain certain things. Dad, look. You're swell. I couldn't ask for a better father, but uh, you're out of step with the times. You're you're old-fashioned. Old-fashioned? Yeah, things aren't done today the way they were when you were my age. How are things done today, Andrew? Well, let's talk about family standards and carrying on the proud old name. Well? No, it's a lot of hogwash. Hogwash? <laughs> Pardon the expression, Dad. It, it means hooey, uh, malarkey, baloney. <laughs> Don't look so shocked. There's no offense intended. I see. Perhaps, as you say, Andrew, I am old-fashioned. Perhaps I don't understand the modern ways of doing things. That's it, Dad. Things are different today. A guy meets a babe, falls in love with her, and marries her. It's very simple. I'm afraid it isn't quite as simple as you make it sound, son. Oh, forget it, Dad. Now, look, go on to Chicago and buy yourself a couple of railroads. And when you get back, I'll present you to your new daughter-in-law. Andrew, you're not serious about this. Not serious? I was never more serious in my life. What a pity. Andrew, I hoped it wouldn't come to this. Uh, I'm afraid I shall be forced to take steps. Take steps? Andrew, I forbid you to marry this, this babe, as you call her. Oh, Dad, you're terrific. Don't you see that just forbidding me to do something I want to do means means nothing? I have more deadly ammunition, Andrew. And I suppose you mean by that, that unless I do as you say, you'll disown me. In essence, that's exactly what I mean. Dad, I feel sorry for you. Honestly, I do. Sorry for me? I hate to say this, Dad. I know how important money and position and family tradition are to you. You've become steeped in it. Why, it's more important in your life than, than anything else. But to me, it doesn't mean a doggone thing. I don't recall that you ever hesitated to take advantage. Of course not. I'd be a fool if I did. You're being a fool now, Andrew. Perhaps. I'm willing to risk the consequences. Oh. I have a mind of my own, Dad, and ambitions of my own. In short... I want to make my own way in the world. Very noble sentiments, Andrew. Does your uh, young lady share them? Of course she does. I doubt it. Now, just a moment, Dad. Just a moment, Andrew. I'm still your father, and I suggest that you keep a civil tongue in your head. And I suggest that you keep... That's quite enough. So long as you remain in this house, I'll tolerate neither disobedience nor impertinence. I may be old-fashioned and out of step with the times, as you suggest, but it has been my experience that any little tramp who tries... If you do not care to hear what I have to say, you're at liberty to leave. 
That's just what I intend to do. Then go now. When you've come to your senses and are ready to ask my forgiveness, I'll be glad to consider... Ask your forgiveness? For what? For marrying the girl I happen to love? You young fool. You're incapable of love or of making a logical decision. All your life you've been petted and pampered and indulged. Perhaps it is best that you do go to this woman and learn for yourself that you can't buy love. When she discovers that you haven't a cent to your name... Stop! If you want my father, I'd knock your teeth down your throat. How dare you threaten me? Get out of this house! Very well. I'm sorry, Dad. I, I had hoped... Get out! Andrew. Andrew, my son, what have I done? <laughs> Let it ring. Darling, I can't just let it ring. Let me go, Jim. Kiss me first. Hey, take it easy, big boy. I'll be back in a minute. Whoever it is, tell him you're busy. I'm busy, all right. Hello? Hello, Joe. This is Andy. Oh, hello, darling. How are you? Joe, listen. I'm across the street in a drugstore. I've got to see you right away. Who is it, Joe? Just an old girlfriend of mine. Your way, darling? Oh, what a pity we can't get together. Joe, what's the matter? I'm not far away. I'm only across the street. I'm coming up. No, I, I mean some other time, darling. It's, it's simply impossible now. What do you mean, impossible? Listen, Joe, I, I've got to see you right that now. That doesn't sound much like a girlfriend to me. Jim, go back and sit down. I, Joe, I'm... who's that you're talking to? There's someone there with you. Uh, no, darling, it's quite impossible, really. That punk Andy flag. Well, of course it isn't, Jim. Give me the phone. No. Joe. Joe. Give me that phone. No. <laughs> there. Oh, you, you little... Uh, hello. Hello, hello. No use, Jim. The connection's broken. Yeah. Who was it, Joe? It was nobody. Just nobody, I told you. An old girlfriend of mine. What's her name? Name? Why, Mary. That's it, Mary Davis. Hmm. Mary Davis, huh? Yes. Jim, trust me, don't you? I want to trust you, baby. You know that. I want to trust you. Oh, Jim, darling. I thought for a minute you were double-crossing me. Put your arms around me, darling. Love me? Uh, Joe, I... I'm crazy about you. You know that. Oh, trust me, Jim. Who's that? It's nobody, Jim. It, it couldn't be. Don't bother. It's that guy. It's the guy you were talking to on the telephone. It isn't, Jim. There wasn't a guy. I'm going to find out. No, Jim, no. Come back here. Well, let me go. Hey, maybe that's an idea. Yeah, you go, baby. I'll just step behind the door here and listen. Jim, you, you won't, sir. Uh... Go on, baby. Go on. You haven't got anything to worry about. Jim, please, I... Go on, open the door. All right, Jim. <laughs> yeah, Inspector Danton speaking. Inspector Danton, this is James Hunter. I'm in apartment 21A, 444 Albert Street. Well, what about it? There's been a murder. I saw it happen. You don't say. Who got knocked off? A girl named Josephine Hutchins. I, well, I was visiting her, and someone rang the doorbell. When she answered it, he shot her. He shot her. Who's he? Uh, Andrew Flagg. I saw him do it. Well, well, well. So you saw him do it. Look, son, where did you say all this happened? In apartment 21A at 444 Albert Street. Will you send someone out, Inspector? Bob, I'll not only send someone out, I'll come with them. Just keep your shirt on till we get there. Frankly, Inspector, it sounds rather dull. 
I resent that you insisted I leave a pleasant fire to accompany you. Oh, you do? Well, now, just a minute, Barton Drake. Maybe mm-hmm. when I explain a few things, you won't think it's so dull. Then please explain. Okay, first of all, why didn't the guy who shot the babe shoot the guy who called me on the phone, too? I happen to be motorist idea, Inspector. Besides, when a guy witnesses a murder, he doesn't calmly pick up a telephone and call me. No? What does he do, Inspector? He spreads the alarm. He goes around yelling his head off. He screams. Well, brilliant, Inspector. Positively brilliant. Oh, nuts. <laughs> All right, Inspector, you win. I'll admit I'm glad you called me. Frankly, sitting at home alone was becoming boring. Then why didn't you say so in the first place instead of... Here we are, Inspector. 444 Albert Street. Yeah. It's kind of a shabby-looking building, isn't it? Mm, it has been better days. Well, let's go up. Phew. Four flights and still going. <laughs> this is the door here, Inspector. Apartment 21A. Ring the bell, Inspector. Okay. Say, hmm? you don't suppose... Huh. You must have been waiting right on the other side of the door, Bob. Well, well, yes, yes, I was. Come in. You're Inspector Danton, aren't you? Yeah, I'm Danton, and this is Bart Drake. Oh, hello, Mr. Drake. I'm Jim Hunter. Nice to know you, Jim. Well, where's the body? Right there, Inspector Danton. When the shot came, she fell backward into the room. And you let her lie, eh? Well, yes. Well, I I knew it would be wrong to disturb anything. Good boy. Well, what do you think, Bart? I don't know, Inspector there aren't any powder burns. Powder burns? Why in heck could there be any powder burns? She didn't shoot herself. So I understand. Jim, would you mind telling us exactly how it happened? Well, there isn't much to tell. Joe and I were sitting what here. What were you doing? Well, well, visiting. Oh. Go on, Jim. Well, the doorbell rang. Joe went to the door and opened it. And there was a shot. Joe screamed and staggered back into the room. Simple, eh, boy? Yes. Uh, what were you, Jim, when this happened? Well, as a matter of fact, I was behind the door. Behind the door? Yes. Well, you see, I... Well, I rather expected who Joe's caller might be. Well, what if you did? Well, I... I guess I'd better tell you everything. Yeah, yeah, you'd better break down and give us the work. Uh, Bart, I told you there was something to this. I know you did, Inspector, and I'm beginning to suspect that you were right. Well, Jim, well, Joe and I were engaged. Or that is, we would have been shortly. Recently, I had reason to suspect that she... Well... Someone else. Andy Flagg, eh? Yes, Andy Flagg. I couldn't believe that Joe would two-time me, though. So you decided to come up and visit with her, eh? Yes. While I was here, the phone rang. It was Andy Flagg. How do you know it was Andy Flagg? I was standing close to Joe while she talked on the phone. She pretended it was a girlfriend. But I wasn't fooled for a minute. So what did you do? Well, when the doorbell rang, I told Joe to open the door, and I stepped in behind it. Why? Well, Why? Because I wanted to see if it really was Flag. Uh, what did you figure on doing about it when you found out? Oh, well, I don't know. That's a good answer. Jim, if you were behind the door, how could you see whoever it was standing on the threshold? Because when the door was open, I could see through the crack made by the panel in the case. Uh, it's possible, Bart. Yes, but not in this case. Jim, will you please step behind the door and stand in the exact spot where you were when you saw Andy Flag? Well, why? I already told go you. Go on, go on. Do as he says. Well, all right. Right here. I see. You were in that exact spot. Yes. Fine. Now open the door, Inspector, and walk across the hall and stand and get the uh, opposite wall. Do what? Now listen, Bart. What the I'm heck? going to prove, Inspector, that Jim is lying. Yeah? Well, I'll be... Okay, here I go. This way you want me? Yes, that's fine, Inspector. Okay. Well, Jim, can you see him? Oh, of course not. He's across the hall. Flag was standing on the threshold. Too bad, Jim. All right, Inspector, come on in. I still don't get it. Uh, how have you proved anything? Don't you see, Inspector, if Flag was standing on the threshold, as Jim says, it would have been a close-range shot. Say, a close-range shot would have meant there'd be powder burns. That's right, Inspector, and there weren't any powder burns, were there? Well, you dirty rat, you didn't think you got to pin this on me! <laughs>
keep your hands off. Take it easy, Plastic. All right, back inside the room. Close the door, will you, Bart? Glad to, Inspector. Now, let's relax and talk this over. Why'd you shoot her, Buster? Well, I didn't shoot her. You can't prove that I did. Oh, we can't? No, you can't. That's a laugh, eh, Bart? He says we can't prove that he shot the babe. I'm afraid he's right, Inspector. Huh? What do you mean, he's right? I thought you just proved the guy was lying. I did. However, proving that he murdered Joe Hutchins is another matter. Oh, doggone it. You mean we got to let him go? No, no, no. On the contrary, Inspector. I tell you, I didn't do it. You can't hang this on me. It happened just as I said, only... Only you lied when you said you saw Andrew Flagg standing outside the door. Is that it, Jim? Well, well, so what if I did? A lot. A man who would willingly send another man to the electric chair for a murder he didn't commit is himself capable of murder. That's what we cops call the psychological trend of criminal propensity. Well, I read that in one of your books, by the way. It sounds like a lot of hocus pocus to me. What's it mean? Just this. We're all going over and have a talk with Andrew Flagg. If he has satisfactory answers to certain questions I'm going to ask him, we'll know that it was you who murdered Joe Hutchins. Hello? Andrew, is that you? Dad? Why, why, I thought you'd gone to Chicago. I started, but changed my mind. I've been trying to call you for the past hour. Where have you been? Why, I've been out. Well, Dad, listen, I'm sorry for the way I acted. I guess your ideas are best. Andrew, my boy, that's wonderful. Nothing you could say could make me happier. Where are you now, Dad? I'd like to see you as soon as I can. I'll be there in 15 minutes. Andrew. Yes, Dad? Is anything wrong? You sound upset. Yes, I, I am upset. Hurry home, will you, Dad? There, there, there's something I want to talk to you about. Nothing serious has happened? Well, I'd rather not talk about it over the phone. I... I need your help, Dad. Very well, my boy. I'll get there as soon as I can. Goodbye. So long, Dad. Oh, how could this have happened to me? Yes? Are you Andrew Flagg? Yes, that's right. I'm Barton Drake. This is Inspector Noah Denton. Hi. I suppose you know Jim Hunter. Jim Hunter? So you're the... Yeah, I'm the guy Joe was really in love with. <laughs> Suck it. Then it was you who was with her in her apartment when I phoned. Yeah, it was me. I was still there when you came up later and shot her. Shot her? What did you say? I said I was still there when you came up and shot Joe. I was standing behind the door and I saw everything... Oh, wait a minute, Buster. You didn't see anything, remember? Uh, well, well, I didn't have to see him. I know it was Flag. Who else would have done it? Who else knew I was there? Who else was in love with her? Well, don't look at me. Joe isn't dead. She can't be. Unfortunately, she is dead, Andy. What's more important, she was murdered. And what we want to know is, where were you when it happened? Where was I? Yeah. How do I know? When did it happen? Say, say, if you think I shot Joe, you're crazy. Oh, sure, sure. We're crazy whenever we accuse someone of murdering someone else. That's what they all say. Maybe we are. I don't know. Andy, suppose you tell us exactly what happened tonight. You admit calling Joe Hutchins on the phone. What happened afterwards? Well, I... I came home. I knew that someone was up in her apartment. Oh, it just made me sick. I see. According to Jim here, there was something important you wanted to see Joe Hutchins about. Uh, what was that? Well, it, it isn't important now. And Dad and I had quarreled. Somehow he had find, found out about Joe. He wanted me to give her up. He was decent enough about it. You wouldn't even let me tell him her name. You mean by that, of course, that your dad didn't want to embarrass you by attempting to buy her off? Yeah, I guess that's what he meant. And after you made that telephone call to Miss Hutchins, uh, you came directly home? Yes. I hoped that dad would still be here, but he'd gone. He uh, called me about 15 minutes ago. Well, well, but we missed the boat again. Doesn't it give you a headache the way our suspects wash out on us? No, Inspector, on the contrary. I think that we... Oh, Hey, that must be Dad now. Oh? Andrew, in heaven's name, what... Oh. Who are these men? They're policemen, Dad. Policemen? What are policemen doing in this house? That's a fair question. Look, Mr. Flagg, a party named Joe Hutchins was shot. And it looks to us as if your son... Joe Hutchins shot. Is she... Is she dead? As a marinated herring. Now, look, Mr. Flagg. Andrew, is that true? You you didn't... Oh, of course I didn't, Dad. You ought to know I wouldn't do such a thing. Why, of course. I'm sorry, son. Forgive me. Well, that takes care of that, doesn't it? 
Flag says he didn't knock off Joe, and everyone believes him. That leaves me. Well, if you think I'm going to take that lion down, you're out of your mind. Andrew, who is this young upstart? What's he doing here? He's Jim Hunter. It was he who shot Joe. You're a liar. You shot him. How could I have? I didn't even go to the apartment. Let's see your proof. I can prove it. Boys, boys, leave us not become angry with each other. My, my. See here, if you men are a policeman, I'll have to ask you to take your prisoner and leave. Furthermore, I want it distinctly understood that the name of Flag will not be dragged into this mess. Well, well, so you don't want the flag dragged through the mud, eh? But did you hear him? We'll be smirching somebody's good name again. Yes, I feel chagrin, don't you, Inspector? Yeah. By the way, why don't you ask Mr. Flagg where he was when Joe Hutchins was shot? Ask him. See, that's an idea. All right, Pop, where were you? Bless you, officer. I'll not stand for this. Get out of my house. We intend to leave in just about three minutes, Mr. Flagg, and we intend to take Joe Hutchins' murderer with us. Are you implying, sir, that I or my son... I'm implying, Mr. Flagg, that unless you stop avoiding the question and tell us where you were when Joe Hutchins was shot... I'm going to ask Inspector Danton to charge you with her murder. Ridiculous. Drake, if you're saying that my father shot Joe, you are crazy. Am I? Very well, Inspector. Get out your handcuffs it's and just do... a minute. Well, Mr. Flagg, I suppose under the circumstances I should uh, cooperate. A very central station. I can prove it. I still have my ticket stamped with the hour and date of my arrival. Now, there's one for the books. Flagg, you must think we're a couple of dopes. I do. Oh, you do? Well, now play this one on your flute. Railroad tickets don't have the time of day stamped on them. Also, chum, how did you know that you were at Grand Central when the murder was committed, since nobody's told you yet when the murder was committed? Inspector Danton, your attitude is obnoxious. Ah. My railroad ticket may not bear the time of day, but my baggage check does. And since the murder was committed between the time I left home and when I returned a few minutes ago, I must have been at Grand Central Station when it occurred. Oh. Your alibi is almost as perfect, Mr. Flagg, as Jim Hunter's. As mine? Now, what the devil are you talking about? I'll make it as simple as I can. Mr. Flagg went to Grand Central, checked his luggage, went to Joe Hutchins' apartment, knocked on the door... And when she opened it, he shot at her. Look here, Drake. I only said you shot at her, Mr. Flagg. You missed. She turned and ran back into the room. Just as you were about to shoot a second time, someone else shot. You thought it was your sub Andy, and you got out of there fast. That's a lie. No such thing happened. Oh? Then how did you know that Joe Hutchins was shot in the back of the head and not in the forehead? Because I... Because when she... Blessed you, Drake, I didn't say I knew. Sorry, Mr. Flagg. I'm sure if you'd known it was Jim Hunter and not your son who actually murdered Joe Hutchins, you wouldn't have allowed yourself to be tricked so easily. Inspector, look out for Hunter. Get out of my way. I'm coming through and... Damn it, Inspector, I got one thing, you know! Your move. Okay. I'll hop my night up here. <laughs> Just to start things going. <laughs> Very clever, Inspector. Hmm. I uh, say, uh, Bard. Yes, Inspector. There are two things I still don't get. Uh, how did you know it was Jim who shot Joe Hutchins? Hmm? How then? Oh, yes. <laughs> because a bullet entered her head from the rear, Inspector. He was behind the door, remember? Yeah, but why couldn't Flag have shot her? While she was running away, just as easily as Jim Hunter. But, Inspector, because Flagg thought that the man behind the door was his son. And the man behind the door thought that Flagg was Andy. Jim saw a fine chance to let Andy take the blame for Joe's murder. Oh. Oh. I'll uh, move this pawn up two spaces. I'm afraid of that. Now, uh, how'd you know that it was old man Flagg who knocked on the door? Oh, that. Uh, what well, was like this. When Mr. Flagg returned to the house tonight... You announced to him that a party named Joe Hutchins had been shot. Sure, I remember that. Previously, Andy had told us that Mr. Flagg wouldn't allow him to tell him the girl's name. So? So, when you said that Joe Hutchins had been shot, Mr. Flagg acted shocked and wanted to know if she were dead. Say. That's it, Inspector. How did Mr. Flagg know that Joe Hutchins was a girl if he'd never heard her name? Well, I'll be... <laughs> say, bye. <laughs> What kind of a rap do you think Flagg will have to take for attempted murder? I don't know, Inspector. Punishing criminals is not my hobby. Mystery is my hobby. Uh -huh. 